Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Abigail Pack coming to you from University of North Carolina at Greensboro where I am the Horn Professor and I'm going to be sharing some tips and performance help for the district band auditions this year. So right here in front of you, you're going to see the district music. The first thing I do whenever I am learning a new piece of music is I read it through top to bottom. If I have to stop here and there and regroup a bit, no big deal, just getting a sense of things. The next thing I do is I'll go through, as you see here, and I'll highlight big things that I want to particularly pay attention to, like dynamics, uh, certain articulations, maybe the tempo, some accidentals, stuff like that. And then I'll go back, and the third thing that I do before I try to run it down again is I'll woodshed the tricky parts. And I'll take as long as I need to, to get it as accurate as possible. Once I've, I feel like I have everything the way it ought to be, I'll practice many, many run-throughs. Okay, so for the audition solo 1D, <clears throat> that's marked Moderato Con Spirito, quarter note at 96. The first thing that I like to do is turn on my metronome, and sometimes I'll sing or clap or just sort of count through to get a feeling of how fast I'm going to need those 16th and 8th notes to go. Uh, here in the, the copy that I've shared with you, I've also added a few arrows at the ends of the quarter notes, so I remember to play the quarter notes full value. I want to make sure that I'm really playing all the way to beat 2, or if it's a half note, all the way to the end of the measure. I also have a few accidentals. Marked, I know a lot of the music that we play initially has a B flat. You'll see that the first several measures, the first section, all have B natural, and then there's a key change at measure into measure 17. So I have highlighted the B naturals here and there, and I've actually highlighted a couple of the B flats to make sure that I remember to do that. Now this one seems pretty straightforward as far as where I might decide to breathe, for example. There are quite a few rests. I think that whenever you're trying to decide where you're going to breathe, it should be very natural and comfortable for you. So practice it a few different ways, but make sure that you mark in what your final decisions are so that you can practice the pacing. You'll also see that there's some accents, some tenuto markings, which are those lines underneath the notes. To me, those tenutos are full value, but also a little bit of legato with some emphasis, such as measure nine. You see some tenuta marks on a forte. So you'll hear in the sample that I'm going to provide for you that I've emphasized those eighth notes a little bit extra. Also, I've highlighted some staccatos. I have highlighted a tie in measure 12, 13, 14. Measures uh, 13, 14, there's a tie. Uh, so you want to make sure that you play across the bar before you have your accents. Generally speaking, I've gone through and I've highlighted anything that uh, is of particular interest to me that I'm, I'm going to make sure that I get accurate. Uh, you'll hear in the sample I've provided a recording of this whole, this whole tune plus the A ending, and then I've recorded it with a B ending, depending on which one you decide to audition with.
let's take a look at this music for Audition Solo 2D. There's several very important things I've highlighted in my part here I think that will help you. The first one is the tempo. So the 6-8 is marked eighth note at 108. It's very important to practice this with a metronome so that you're hearing the click at the eighth note because it's quite slow. So you need to make sure that you play all of your sixteenths and quarters and eighths. Everything needs to be very even. I've actually highlighted where I chose to breathe because whenever you have something like this, you want to make some decisions. Uh, breathe where it's comfortable for you. Uh, make sure that it's in a spot where you feel like you, you have plenty of time, it's very comfortable. Uh, however, you'll see that I have some arrows underneath the notes where I chose to breathe. I want to make sure that I'm not chopping them off too early and unnecessarily. I'm going to try to hold them as long as I can before I take that breath. And then, for example, in measure four, I want to make sure that I'm holding that note uh, for the right number of eighth notes. And in this case, it's four full eighth notes. I don't want to drop out too early, but I want to make sure that I'm holding it full value and then I have two eighth rests at the end of measure four. The other thing that uh, I think is very important to notice are the dynamics in this beginning section. So there's that nice decrescendo all the way to the last measure of the first six eight, which is measure eight. Once again, I need to make sure that I hold that low A at a diminuendo for four full eighth notes. Now before we move on, just go through and highlight what's important to you. And then when you look at the onomato section, which is coming next, it's a 2-4, it's a quarter note at 88. That's a pretty big tempo shift. So I want to make sure that I've practiced it at that tempo before um, and the transition uh, before I move on to the last section of 6-8, whether you choose A or B. So for me, when I practice this 2-4, I start out a little under tempo, whatever is comfortable for you, because you have a lot of transition here between 16ths at the uh, faster onomato style, and then you have triplets moving into a dotted 8 16th. So we want to pay particular attention to the fact that we da da dee da 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 It's a very important transition from a triplet to a dotted eight sixteenth quarter. You'll hear in the sample that I recorded for you uh, how to make that work, but really, really can't stress enough how important it is to practice this section, no matter what tempo you're rehearsing with your metronome. Then you go back into your, your brilliant style uh, in measure 17. Um, I've highlighted some accents. I've continued to put in where I felt most comfortable breathing. For me, I really had to practice that measure 19, that octave jump down to a low G with an accent. And then in a 16th coming out, you'll see that I drew an arrow under the middle C to make sure that it was a full value quarter note. Then you have a really nice rallentando, which is a good way to kind of unwind and transition back to the adagietto, where you have the eighth back at 108. So the rallentando really can be paced um, however you would like to do it. It can be a, a, a really self-choosing self speed there. You can really make that decision for yourself. The fermata, um, very important to adhere to that. That's the also highlighted in, in uh, let's see, that would be measure 22. Make sure that you catch that. Then you go into your adagietto, no matter whether you choose uh, the A ending or the B ending. Now, if you choose the A ending, there's a nice breath mark in the middle and then you have the poker retard back down to that low A. If you choose the B, one thing to particularly pay attention to is the appassionato in measure 28. What does that mean? It just means that you can really milk the top part of that line and really make it a big show-off moment. Before you go through this 16th note, not really a flourish because remember it is only 8th note at 108, but it's just a nice way to come down off of this big sort of Broadway cinematic F to the G. I think you can really play that up, play it all full value, and then come down back to the low A with a diminuendo. <laughs>
The Horn Concerto of Franz Strauss uh, is a quintessential piece of music. I think you would be hard pressed to find a horn player that hasn't learned this solo in some, at some time in their life. Franz Strauss being a horn player himself uh, really knew how to write wonderfully for the horn, such as the case with this particular horn concerto. So uh, what you see in the, the music that I've shared with you are just a few places that I have highlighted, uh, I would go through on your own and highlight all the things that you think are really important that you might miss or you'll need to spend a little extra time on. One of the best tools that we have for learning a big piece like this are all of the amazing recordings that you can find nowadays on Spotify, on YouTube, any other music source that you might have. Uh, so what I'm going to do is list a few of my favorite recordings for you. You're going to want to go through the Strauss and rehearse it a little bit under tempo. I always encourage uh, applying the correct dynamics and articulations even at a slower tempo because it's harder to relearn that stuff after the fact than if you get, get right into it with all of the correct details right off the bat. I think a slower tempo at, at the start before you're really at tempo would be a good idea just to make sure that you're getting through everything. Um, another big issue with the Strauss is this is the entire first movement uh, is getting through the whole thing uh, with endurance. So it's very important to build yourself up so that when you get to the very end, which is where all the high notes are and the trill and all the fast stuff, uh, you're, not, you're not losing your strength and your power. Uh, so I think it's really important to make sure that you're practicing this all the time. Add in your fundamentals, your scales, play some long tones and lip slurs every day to make sure that you're really staying in shape for a piece like this. When dealing with the 16th section, the animato, towards the end, this is after rehearsal seven, seven bars after rehearsal seven, uh, <clears throat> this, this is a, a, just a technical exercise. Strauss is basically writing scales and finger technique up and down the range um, until we get to the end at rehearsal nine. It's a really good idea to practice this whole section under tempo all the way through. As I said before, get all of your articulations and your dynamics squared away as you get faster.
And then when you get to um, the end, it should be a little easier to put it all together. When you get to measure 141, and you'll see the TR with a squiggle line above the measure, that means trill. There's basically two types of trills. We have a lip trill and a valve trill. Now a lip trill is going to be a trill that you only use your lips. You're slurring really fast between that third space C and one whole step, the D just above. And you're basically trilling between those two pitches. The other trill that you have at your disposal is a valve trill. It's a little trickier because uh, if you play uh, the third space C with just trigger or open, um, you're going to need to move your valves pretty fast between the C and the D. Lip trills generally work a little bit better right here, but if you need to do a valve trill, a good rule of thumb is to trill at least a 16th note speed. So if your speed in the measure before is about here, that's a pretty effective tempo. So just remember when you're practicing this, try to get your trill at least the tempo of the 16th of whatever your tempo is when you perform this. Some final thoughts for you. For performance tips as you prepare for your district audition, practice in as many different types of spaces as possible. Practice in your room. Practice in the bathroom. I know that sounds crazy. Practice in the garage. Practice in the kitchen. Practice in places where there are lots of heavy carpet and pillows and furniture. The idea being that you're practicing in different rooms all the time so that you're not only getting used to one space because you don't really know what type of space you're going to actually get to perform in so you want to be prepared for anything even practice outside can be really fun number two perform in front of family and friends so that you can practice getting past your nerves the more people you can play for the better it just gets you used to having other people listening remember when you're performing focus on your music and you should be good the third tip that I have is practice, uh, make sure that you're practicing in nice performance, professional clothes. In fact, if you have the opportunity to practice and whatever you plan to wear for your audition, do that as much as you can. Practice in neat professional attire. Make sure that you're comfortable uh, in your dress clothes. If you're always practicing in sweats and a t-shirt and you put on your dress clothes, it might feel so different and so unusual to you that it's distracting. So you want to make sure that you're practicing as close to the performance as possible. If you are asked to introduce yourself and what grade you're in, make sure that you make as much eye contact as possible. You enunciate very clearly. You try not to mumble. Have a smile on your face. Uh, you want to try to look like you're actually enjoying what you're doing and that you're there to have a good time. All very important things and make sure that you say thank you. Best of luck to you.